Calm down. Are, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, look. We're doing this interview mere days after we wrap, so it's 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 really kind of hard to even process it because this is normally a period we'd be on a break anyway between seasons. So I think everybody's body in a couple of months is going to say, "All right, time to go back to the work on the show," and then we'll realize, "Wait a minute, it doesn't exist." So it's it's very heavy because it was. I mean, first of all, the length of time nine years is really um, any time you do something for that long, it just becomes ingrained in you that this is what your life is. And um, but also this because this kind of thing is so extraordinary for a show to to just work well enough to last that long, uh, you know, and everyone who's been in this business for any amount of time and has tried to be part of things like that and mostly not have it happen, uh, you know, when it happens, it's so stunning and uh, and you realize it's very special. Nine years was insane. I didn't think it was going to go uh, that long. I, I didn't think we'd get uh, a pilot made, but we were very fortunate we got through and it was kind of like we just kind of jumped over each hurdle and, you know, just really never looked back, just kept kind of going. and. But I, I always did think the hammer was going to drop. What's so great about the King of Queens is that it actually didn't change over time. It, it, we never actually, you know, people, unless they're actively working on it, don't naturally change their habits, you know, and evolve. You know, you, you need a little help in that department, okay? I love that their relationship was always about love and their relation, and anytime they had a fight or something went on, it was a, always about the love that they had for each other, but also their friends and their family. I just, I don't think it changed that much. For me, it was a battle to, to, uh, to at this point in my life, decide to uh, take on this show and uh, perform, because I didn't know whether I could actually pull it off after Seinfeld. I can't hide it anymore. I, I need my Yahtzee buddy. <laughs> the last time we played, you shoved the dice in my mouth. <laughs> Sometimes I love you so much, I gotta hurt you. So I met Kevin James and I met Michael Whitehorn and, and all they did was laugh at everything I did. I got caught up, I told about my father who said he still was having sex at 95 but he had nobody to do it with. So they laughed and the more I, I spoke about my father, the more I realized I was gonna be the father in this show. And I got the part, like everything else, I said, well, this is gonna go about uh, uh, three weeks. Going. All right, catch you later. <laughs> they just told me today that the King of Queens is over tomorrow. So, um, <laughs> out of a job, I was quitting anyway. The feeling around here has been surreal. I mean, I think we're all kind of numb. I'm convinced that there's going to be an over, like the, the dam is going to break the final show. Once we go out for our curtain call for the final time, I think that's when it's all going to sort of break loose and people are going to be crying and all of that stuff. This has been, you know, our job and our life for nine years. You're saying she thinks I'm a lesbian? <laughs> ah, I'm getting a Katie Lang kind of thing going on. This is, this is ridiculous. I mean, I'm clearly a man. This has never been an issue. All right, well, whatever you say there, Spike. <clears throat> when we started, I thought it really was a good show and a lot of fun to work on. If you told me nine years from then, I'd, I'd still be working on it, and it would still be on the air, and people would still be enjoying it. <clears throat> I just wouldn't have been able to wrap my mind around that. It's been a great run, unbelievable experience, you know? Not bad for my first series to be on for, I've actually been on for six years as a regular, even though I was on for the whole ride in the beginning. I also think that the show is uh, successful because it's very relatable. Everybody thinks they're Doug Heffernan, everybody thinks they're Carrie Heffernan, and those that think they're Carrie and are Doug really have problems. Being on King of Queens, you know, for the three, four seasons that I was, was such an honor then, because it, it's so chock full of talent. It's, I think, got the best cast and writing that television's seen in years. And so I was thrilled to be a part of it then and I'm very touched by the fact they wanted me back for the final episode. Last night in Manhattan, you want to uh, enjoy a New York minute? <laughs> uh, sure. Should we uh, roll out the bubble wrap? <laughs> I don't think so. Once I get going, it's gonna sound like a gunfight. 
I look back and I don't know if I had a, a favorite episode or uh, you know, there there are parts of each episode that I loved and there are parts that I that I hated in each episode. I really did. I would be very critical in watching it, but there were moments where I would just crack up with you know Jerry or Leah and just have these special moments where we just every 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 rehearsal just going through it. We would just it would be so hard to get through and and even uh, when we would uh, film the show at night, you know, on that Friday night. You know, I, I, it would be very difficult to get through. I'd be cracking up. I don't actually have a favorite episode. It's it's like asking, you know, who's your favorite child? There's moments in each show that that are so endearing. There's so, and, and it's more behind the scenes what people didn't see, and it's the relationships that people didn't really know about. It's from cameramen to makeup artists, hairstylists, wardrobe. It's everybody. You know, the booms. You know. Uh, there's so many things behind the scenes in every episode that you go, oh my God, that was the week that we saved that dog when we were on location, or that, you know, oh, that was a fight we weren't talking. <laughs> Getaway is my favorite episode, purely for selfish reasons, uh, because it's about uh, my sexual prowess with my wife. You're making me look bad. What are you talking about? Look, you and Kelly three times last night, and then... What was this little thing this morning? What was that all about? Were you just trying to zets me? And so suffice it to say, I got much fan mail after that. <laughs> uh, I had friends, uh, I had friends' moms calling me saying that they wanted to introduce me to a, their their best friend's daughter at work. So I was like, I love this episode. Get away! Yes. There was an episode where my gift to Doug and Carrie was to sing them a song, and I sang uh, an Andy Gibbs song. That was a lot of fun. We did that about 500 times, and we cried after each take. At least the crew did, because I was that bad. There's a lot of Jerry stuff that I remember. I remember one scene where I was in it with him, but it was him. He was sort of doing a Helen Keller thing, pretending he couldn't see and couldn't hear, and he was so committed and so all over the place and being physical. Arthur, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Water. And I was going, jeez, look at this guy at his age, just 180% committed and doing, a, and I couldn't get through without laughing. I mean, he was so great. My favorite episode of all episodes was the one in which Arthur, during Christmas, wants to uh, give Kevin and Leah their uh, Christmas friends. So he cashes in a lot of his bonds and he buys a little car, one of those European cars, a Belgian car. One, two, three. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and I brought them this car and they absolutely hated this car. They couldn't wait to get rid of the car. In the end, they take the car and they leave it under the Queensboro Bridge. It's where it's going to be, you know, taken apart by whoever comes along. Oh, guess what? There's this really famous cello player from China, Li Fong something. Anyway, he's doing a big concert next week in the city and the firm got all these tickets and Evan gave his to me. <laughs> so if you play your cards right, I'll let you go with me. There's always room for cello. <laughs> <laughs> there was one show that for me personally, it was really a great one, which was called Cello Goodbye. It was one of the first shows of the first season. And it was just for me a show where we really found the series and we sort of hit the, the key relationships and the key attitudes and yet found ways to be funny. Uh, and then Kevin had a whole sequence at the end where he's bored during a cello concert and, and just killing time. And, and he and Carrie have this screaming fight, but because there's a concert going on, they make no sound. <laughs> They're, in every other way, just furious at each other. And that worked wonderfully. And it was just one of the things, that, wow, we really, I think we really got a show here. You always give me this excuse crap, and it drives me insane. I had to go to work. The game was on. I smelled cheese. The one I remember, I haven't seen it in years. It was one I wrote with Lonnie uh, called Horizontal Hold. And it was the whole thing of that they're not going to have sex for two weeks to try to test the relationship and kind of make it better. So how long would this no sex thing be for? Two weeks. Two weeks! That's what the article said! Well, why did you have to go and read in the first place, you show off? Now, come on, it's not that bad. We've gone two weeks before. Maybe you have. I remember it being great. I just remember it being hilarious. And 
The one when he takes a picture of his penis, for me, has sentimental value. Oh, my! <gasps> it's a picture of a man's... Oh, my. <laughs> and it's wearing a little top hat. I think one of my favorites was definitely Window Pane, which was the one where we have the fight. If this house is too much for you, then I'll sell it. I'll sell it right now. I love this house. I'll freaking burn it to the ground before I let you sell it. <laughs> Bless you. Thanks. But also one called Patrons Ain't, which uh, is where they give money to charity. And they're supposed to be in a certain category, but they get listed like three categories below by accident. And it's the whole question of, she wants to complain because they gave all this money. And he's like, you can't complain about charity. And it just, uh, I really liked it. I, I mean, I, I, it doesn't matter. I, we, we didn't do it for the credit. We did it for the kids. <laughs> right, the kids. It's not like we can say, hey, we were supposed to be patrons, you know? That wouldn't be very charitable. No, it would not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Crap. Mine is actually one of the first I, I wrote, which was a Food Fight. It was, Great. Uh, yeah. it was a, I guess people know it as sort of the food affair. What are these crispy nuggets and why aren't they in every vending machine across the country? <laughs> Here, try them with the dipping sauces. What do you got? I got honey mustard and don't laugh, chocolate. Don't you laugh when I dip one nugget in both. <laughs> <laughs> kind of dealt with Doug's relationship with food and, and Carrie feeling like, threatened by Doug eating another woman's food. And it, was a, it, was, it was a very special episode. Yeah, very well received. Yeah, Great. It was hilarious. I hadn't been as involved the last few seasons that I had been earlier, but I did very much want to write the last episode, you know, to sort of com complete what I had started, I guess. And uh, and I'm really very happy with the way it came out. You know, I think it was a very nice way to end the show. It's sort of one of the things that we really felt strongly about was that it should feel like a King of Queens episode. You know, we wanted to get hit some of our our, our standard notes of Kevin doing a big stunt, which he does. You know, and. Uh, and, and certain kind of relationships hitting certain key moments, you know, and reprising them. And, uh, and so I thought it all came together very well. It was an awful, awful, awful week. It was just every scene we did, we were crying. And they go, okay, let's, you know, do it again. Your eyes are watering. You know, it's like not a scene that you should be <laughs> crying. But it was just, uh, that final episode was just so horrible and there's a there's a scene where I'm on the plane we're on the plane and I'm telling him a story of why I did what I did and I'm crying but it was like <laughs> Kevin was already crying I was already crying before I, we even got to that moment and it was just it was awful <laughs> it was awful it's just a moment in time that's just kind of magical that you just can't get back it's become a family these people and uh, you know aside from uh, my brother, I really have become close to a lot of them. I feel incredibly, uh, undeservedly lucky to have nine years on a show like this, so, yeah. Coming back in, it, it, it just makes you so spoiled and makes you sort of hate the rest of your life because you come and you go, oh, there's some great jokes that I get to say, and there's a great script, and these are all the people that I love working with. And, you know, it made me miss it and made me really happy that I had the time here that I did. and. Uh, uh, and the fact that they thought of me to bring me back made me very, very honored and very touched. I was very fortunate to be working with two amazingly gifted people. Kevin, I think, is another Red Skelton. Buster Keaton, Jerry Lewis, put them all together. I think uh, Leah has the most incredible instrument, use that word. She's a wonderful actress. Uh, they carried the show, essentially. And I was very fortunate that I worked with two very amazingly gifted performers. Down the road, I would definitely consider coming back to television because of the fact that I just love the format. I love the live audience. I love the excitement. I love uh, being at, uh, at at one place where you you know develop this family. You know, it's like a second family of people and these actors and crew and, and writers and everybody. It was a lot of fun. Those guys are just the greatest to work with. It started to sink in how special and unusual this was. You know, for me personally, 
uh, it was amazing to have this happen because I was fortunate enough to be part of another, uh, you know, uh, thing like this. Family Ties was my first, re you know, major kind of uh, job when I was in my early 20s, and, and to be part of that as a writer and, and the whole formation of that show and have it become what it was, and then I went off and did various things that were not as successful as that. But then to have then this fall into place and be, you know, in its own way, just as wonderful and, and successful of a thing. Uh, I just wow, but I, you know, I must have, I must have been done something right in another life. I know not in this one. I'm pretty sure about that, but another life maybe.